Buddhism comes in many shapes and forms, no matter how small or insignificant the act or activist. My earliest stages of environmental activism focused around single-use plastic in Hoi An, where I lived for most of my life. Around the time when I turned 12, I started to notice a drastic increase in the amount of plastic waste around me. My ocean, beaches, beaches, rivers, and rice fields were suffocating under an alarming amount of single-use plastic. I wanted to do something about it. I realized that there were other young, like-minded people in my community, in my school even, who also felt the urge to act upon this. The Green Shoots Earth Ambassadors started out as a group of five students and a teacher at my international school in Hoi An. We declared ourselves ambassadors for the Earth because while there are many ambassadors of nations here in Vietnam speaking on behalf of their people, there wasn't anyone speaking on behalf of Earth. That voice was important to us, and we felt like it had to be heard. We launched our campaign on single-use plastic straws, organizing cleanups and events, partnering with local businesses to encourage ecotourism, fundraising, and advocating for the greener Hoi An that we believe in. To support and lead this campaign was one thing. However, on an individual level, I felt like something was missing. I felt like despite all my efforts, I wasn't living the most sustainable lifestyle possible. When I left those meetings, I wasn't practicing what I was preaching. Then came the day when I came across a single fact. Eating less meat and dairy is the best thing you can do for the planet. Up to then, I had eaten meat without questioning. I had a standard diet for a 12-year-old. In retrospect, I disconnected the pork and the beef from the pigs and the cows I saw every day cycling to school. I disconnected the cooked food that I consumed from a living animal that produced it. Animal agriculture, the unpredicted chapter I suddenly became so aware of in the grander schemes of the sustainability story. Knowing that I was contributing to the very thing I was fighting against left me deeply pained and guilty too. Here's an example of what I learned. Raising animals for food produces more greenhouse gases than all the cars, planes, and other forms of transportation combined. And at the time, this shook me and inspired me into action. Eager to start, I explained to those around me that I wasn't going to eat meat on certain days one small step at a time. Around a month later, I was traveling in the island Bali, and intuitively after that trip, I stopped eating red meat completely, then chicken, then seafood, until I was mostly vegetarian back in Hoi An. A full year of being vegetarian passed by. I was 13 and happened to be in India at that time. While traveling there, India's food store really stood out to me. One of the biggest populations in the world, with many individuals eating plant-based in a conscious and non-violent manner. And while traveling there, I was eating wholly plant-based. In fact, no dairy at all. I almost didn't notice. That's when vegetarian becomes vegan, right? India marked a period where many things were shifting inside of me. And while immersed in the culture, my very own definition of veganism changed too. So, here's my truth. 
Veganism is deeply interlinked with all aspects of sustainable living. Globalism, self-sufficiency, minimalism, zero waste, permaculture. Veganism shifted from a diet taken on by individuals into a communal, harmonious way of living. It encompasses our deep instinct to connect with the planet and with other people in our life, with food as a mere instrument. So upon returning back home to Boyan, I cut back substantially on my egg and dairy consumption. At that time, as a vegan, I thought to myself, all the great foods I can't eat anymore. But working to cultivate an animal-free way of living didn't mean goodbye to pho or banana bread or any of my favorite things to eat. What it meant was me spending more time in the kitchen, cooking and baking for myself, for my family and friends. Everyone eats. I firmly believe that if food is one of the three most essential things for human survival, why do we all not work to cultivate a better relationship with it and with those who grow it? And ultimately, it isn't what I can or cannot eat as a vegan. There are no rules. There, there isn't someone in the back of my mind punishing me for eating the one butter cookie. But the most important question to be asking isn't what. I believe it is why. Why? The motive behind our actions. My why for becoming vegan, my motive, my inspiration was guilt. And guilt isn't a sustainable basis to act upon. I was guilty that I wasn't a valid climate activist if I ate meat on a daily. But if I continued running on guilt, and solely guilt, there would come to be a time when I forget the book I read, the documentary I watched, and the fact I learned that inspired everything at the very beginning. Veganism is often mistaken for a diet or a health thing, until you can become so caught up in the details of it that you forget your purpose. But along the way, I found myself a new motivating force, compassion. Compassion replaced guilt. I am vegan at heart because I love animals and because I wish to have a lower impact on the planet that I inhabit. But compassion lets me know that making one mistake isn't worth feeling guilty all day about. The compassion, the compassionate attitude I had towards veganism extended to myself too. Veganism is a learning experience and I'm willing to make many mistakes. But I like to think that my veganism isn't about restricting or constraining, but rather eating what feels right, and at the time, veganism felt right. As human beings, it is our natural instinct to protect what we love. It is this that I propose. Love your family, love your friends, love yourself, and love everyone else around you, but furthermore, love the planet, love the animals, and love the seeds that you have been gifted with. And I found for myself, once the seed of compassion was sown, I truly started protecting, conserving, and speaking on behalf of Earth. So through veganism, the lens in which I previously conceived the world shifted. I see Earth as an Earth ambassador, as a young citizen of the Earth, is that Earth is more than the resources that it yields. And finding a sense of peace, connection with nature has helped me in so many ways as a teenager. But when I close my eyes and take those lenses of perception off and look inward, 
The way I started looking at myself changed too. Seeing myself as a part of nature, not apart from. Last month, on March 15th, over a million youth worldwide school struck for the climate. We held politicians and world leaders accountable for ignoring the effects that their policies were having on climate change. Children may only be 25% of the world's population, but we are 100% of the future. And we're here, committed to respecting and protecting this planet we call home. Whether it be marching on the streets, giving a TED talk, or just humbly and quietly choosing to refuse meat the next meal around. I fluctuate between all of them. Activism comes in many, many forms. And I believe the food story is only a part of the solution. So I would like to end my talk by quoting Greta Thunberg, the leader of the youth climate movement. Perhaps my talk brings you hope. Brings you hope for this generation of innovative young people. Brings you hope that change is coming. But I believe change must come from here. And yes, of course, we do need hope. Of course we do. But the one thing we need more than hope is action. Once we start to act, hope is everywhere. So instead of looking for hope, Look for action. Then, and only then, hope will come.